classical cello before that in the school orchestra. And, um, but when I discovered the power of uh, the bottom end, I was hooked. What feels good is when the bass comes in. <laughs> when the bass comes in, everything suddenly has more significance. It becomes real. It's a, it's completes the picture in a way that no other instrument does for me. So it's visceral. And it's sometimes a, when you play chords and when you think about soloing and, and all the other uh, wonderful things you can do on the bass, uh, it's easy to forget that the real the real reason it's there is to is to provide a a reference point both harmonically and rhythmically for everything else. I could feel that just when you play a low E and and you're and you're with your your buddies in the garage, you know. There's nothing like it. I got my first bass first serious bass around then it was an EB3 Gibson that was quickly stolen off the street one time when I was looking the other way and in 1974 I got a handmade fretless from the guitar lab it was called in New York I still have it I played it on all the original Gong CDs it was a four string fretless and that was my main bass for a long time so you know, the influences I had were the crazy rock of the late 60s, and uh, I went to Woodstock. I was 15 years old and saw Hendrix and Santana, and I loved uh, the Beatles and Jefferson Airplane and Led Zepp and, you know, any number of cream. Now I'm buddies with Jack Bruce, who teaches at, the, at Bootsy's Funk University, too and also plays Warwick's and he was a great hero of mine when I was a kid. As I got into uh, mid to late teens I started really listening to jazz rock and that's when uh, when Miles got me. You know I, I listened to to Céline Savad, Miles Live and, and uh, Bitches Brew and never really recovered. All of those guys influenced me. The bass player was Dave Holland. Uh, I worked my way back. Once I started learning uh, about jazz rock, I eventually had to work my way back a bit into, into the 60s and into Ron Carter and so forth. But Dave Holland was a big influence on me and I followed Miles's protégés into their first jazz rock fusion flowerings, which was Mahavishnu and, and Return to Forever and that kind of thing. By the time I was 23, I had met Pierre Moreland in, in New York, who was a drummer for Gong, and Gong had kind of broken into bits and pieces, and he was in New York met me, we went back to France and reformed Gong with his brother Benoit and, and uh, other ex-members and it took its instrumental jazz rock path at that time. I wrote my first tune for Gong. Soli. Which they just re-released again on Esoteric, an English label 